We begin this hour with a live look outside. It is six o'clock this morning. A beautiful shot from our roof camera here at KVU. We're talking about a mild start to the morning across central Texas when it comes to our weather. We're not expected to hit triple digits today, but it's sure going to feel like it a little later on. And Storm Team Meteorologist Albert Ramon is out there braving the heat this morning for KVU's For the Children's <laughs> School Supply Drive. And this morning comes with a special treat. You can help out. You can get breakfast at the very same time. And Albert, again, you're joining us live from Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue on I rather 183 in Northwest Austin, where you're giving away some free food in exchange for school supplies. Great cause, and the weather's not too shabby out there either. No, it's it's actually great for August. We've got temperatures upper 60s, low 70s, low humidity. What a great morning for you to come on by. We're looking for donations today to purchase. Uh, school supplies that are going to send these kids back to the classroom with the essentials that they need to make it a successful year. Joining us this morning is Teresa Reddy, a board member with For the Children. Teresa, good morning. Good morning. Tell us how great we're doing as far as donations so far this year. So far this year, we are doing well. We've reached about 65% of our goal. We still have a ways to go, though. And uh, our uh, summer donation campaign runs through September 7th of this year, but we also accept donations year round. Uh, you've been a part of this organization for a few years now. How great is the need here in our community? The need is so great. I can't even emphasize enough. Our organization purchases school supplies for over 57,000 students in Central Texas, and the need continues to grow. And the organization buys uh, the school supplies in bulk. That's why we ask for cash donations. So how can people get involved this morning? There's a scan coupon drive going on at HEB, so please take advantage of that. You can also donate through our website for uh, school supplies for the children.org. Teresa, thank you. And we, uh, we're hoping for another successful year. Uh, Saturday's distribution day, so we're excited about that. And if Rudy's here, Northwest Austin 183 near the Duval exit is on the way to work, stop by, have breakfast, donation, we'll give you a coupon to head inside and grab that breakfast taco. Reporting live in Northwest Austin this morning, Albert Ramon, KVU News, Daybreak. All right, Albert, sounds like a great deal and yes. a great cause. We're yes. down to the final, the final wire for getting all those supplies. And uh, again, Albert, we're gonna check back in with you in just a bit, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so right. much. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Well, if you are headed out to Rudy's today, you'll definitely want to crank up the AC on your way there. It's going to be another hot one. Time yes. now to check in with our storm team meteorologist here in studio, Lene Meyer. Good morning, Lene. Hey, good morning, Tina and Yvonne. Yeah, you know, you may not need the air conditioner this morning. You could actually probably roll down the windows. It depends on how much you want to mess up your hair, that sort of thing. Later on, though, yeah, the AC will be needed. Temperatures outside right now, not bad. 72 in Austin, 66 in Bastrop. 70 and getting 71 in LaGrange and 63 in Fredericksburg. As far as temperatures this afternoon, we are going to be warming it up 88 degrees by noontime, 98 for the high. So enjoy the kind of mild start to the morning. Winds will stay out of the northeast, eventually turning east northeast. But the heat, it's back on for the weekend. I will take a look at that full forecast in just a little bit. All right, let's check out traffic, see how things are shaping up on the roads. Shelly Bonner joins us now. Hi there, Shelly. Hi, Yvonne and Tina, and good morning, you guys. Well, we are shaping up very nicely, accident-free, on so far for our Wednesday day break. Now, taking a peek here at 360, still a smooth go in both directions between your Mopac and your 183 connections. Also, if you're traveling on westbound Ben Wide, you're seeing a few more cars with you as you approach I-35, but it's not bad at all just yet. Eastbound Ben White from the Y and Oak Hill, just about seven or eight minutes will get you to the I-35 interchange. And then on I-35 southbound, you're still looking good from about Breaker on down to UT. I'm Shelly Bonner, Daybreak Traffic. Thank you so much, Shelly. 604 now in your overnight news, at least eight people are dead after a car bomb explosion in Iraq. This morning's attack was the second reported in the area in a 24-hour period. Four people were killed in a similar attack last night. The explosions come as another 130 U.S. troops arrive in that country to help Iraqi forces fight the aggressive militant group known as ISIS. The group, now calling itself the Islamic State, had trapped hundreds of Yazidis in the mountains. That's a population there, religious population. Yesterday, the refugees crossed a river into Syria and then went back into Iraq. We turn now to the continuing crisis at our nation's border where cartel and gang violence have escalated in Central America and the number of immigrant minors crossing into the U.S. illegally has multiplied. Many have asked the question, why doesn't the U.S. just send them back? Well, experts say they aren't immigrants, rather refugees seeking asylum. 
So rather than treating them as refugees who are screened for assistance and eligibility, these children are being charged for deportation. Under the 2008 Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act, the unaccompanied minors from Central America must be given a court hearing. What they're not afforded is legal representation in court. Last month, the ACLU filed a lawsuit against the federal government on behalf of all these kids who don't have an attorney. It's about fairness and, it's, and humanity. You know, and and do, we, do we really think it makes any sense for a 10-year-old boy or a 14-year-old girl uh, to properly present an asylum claim with complex facts and law? Opponents say it would be too expensive to give children more time to find an attorney if they don't have one. But others argue if the government has the money to defend its own interests, it can afford to find legal representation. And speaking of the border crisis, Texas Governor Rick Perry will be in Bastrop today to visit troops at Camp Swift Army National Guard Training Center. Perry recently ordered 1,000 National Guard troops to the Texas-Mexico border. Now the Republican is getting a first-hand look at the training those troops are receiving before deployment. Perry has called the influx of unaccompanied children pouring into the U.S. illegally a, quote, side issue in his decision to send in the guard. He says he's more interested in stopping crime that has spiked at the border while overwhelmed federal authorities were distracted. At this time, it's unclear when the troops will actually leave. 6.06 is your time on this Wednesday morning and also in the day ahead, the trial is wrapping up this daybreak over new abortion restrictions that would leave seven Texas facilities where women could legally end a pregnancy. Abortion providers want a U.S. judge to block new rules they say would stop abortions at more than a dozen clinics in the Lone Star State starting September 1st. The law, signed by Governor Perry last year, requires all Texas abortion facilities to meet more stringent hospital-style operational standards. And abortion clinic owners say they don't have the money to meet those new regulations, which they deem unnecessary. The law would leave Texas with no abortion providers in the western half of the state. A fugitive on the run for 17 years is behind bars this daybreak after being captured in San Antonio. Federal agents arrested 54-year-old Oscar Zapata yesterday while he was washing his car. They say he was indicted back in 1996 for six counts of conspiracy possession with intent to distribute cocaine. Zapata posted bond and was arrested back in 1997 on separate charges. U.S. Marshals say he tested positive for continued use of cocaine. That resulted in a second warrant on which he was arrested yesterday. Official Zay Zapata had fled to Mexico to avoid capture, and he later returned to San Antonio under an alias, Jesus Castillo. Managing fantasy football on the job is costing employers a pretty penny in America's money, why most companies say it's worth the extra few bucks. And plus how one major airline is using cuddly puppies and kitties, look how cute, Yvonne, to calm <laughs> jittery passengers.